Good morning and welcome to another edition of Across the Spectrum, Autism Lifeline Links. And we are here today um, in the offices of the Kronkowski Charitable Foundation. Autism Lifeline Links is a project that was started out of the Kronkowski Charitable Foundation to make sure that we as a community are connecting people with autism to existing services. We want to identify gaps in services. We want to be able to break down silos between the agencies that are serving the population advocate uh, for legislative issues or public policy issues that really impact people with autism um, and then positively impact the system of care for people with autism in our community. What's really important to know is we are autism focused but what we well know is that most people with autism have uh, two-thirds people with autism have a comorbid diagnosis whether intellectual or communication disorder so when we are working on autism issues we are really uh, impacting everyone in our community with a disability as well as those who care for them. So that's what Autism Lifeline Links is and that's what Across the Spectrum is. We do these every month on everything from potty training issues for your child with autism and uh, Melanie Coffin with Disability SA who was one of our 14 leadership agencies approached us and said hey this Connect SA plan is happening it really impacts people with uh, disabilities in our community regarding transportation um, how about we make that one of the Facebook live events? And we thought, oh sure, we traditionally do these you know, in someone's office, very, very low tech. And then Melanie uh, connected us, of course, with Shannon Perez at Connect SA, and we are thrilled to have an audience with uh, such an austere group of people to make sure that we are really communicating. And uh, as someone who is in the position to make sure that we're communicating well with people with disabilities in our community, I just want to thank you, all three of you, for being here and credit you and your entities for taking the time to be here today because I believe that communicates to the disability community that you really do have a vested interest in what they have to say about transportation in our, in, for, their, for their future and for our community's future. So thank you very much for being here. Um, so Connect SA is um, an amazing project and what they have is 25 goals um, to achieve by 2025 regarding transportation um, on all levels for our community. Uh, streets, sidewalks, um, uh, via uh, uh, everything. And we're gonna go into some of those specific um, items. But what they really have developed, thanks to great advocates in our community, are um, three specific goals that are related to disability transportation. And we will go into those, those three specific goals and just to give you a very uh, quick, they are um, to make sure that it's create a one call, one click center for transportation services and information for people with disabilities, including seniors. So again, this is for all people with any disability of any kind. Uh, to construct up to 200 miles of sidewalks that eliminate gaps between existing networks and to create equitable citywide standards for access to a variety of affordable, accessible, spontaneous, and appropriate transportation options for seniors and individuals with disabilities. I think that for me, the spontaneous was, uh, is one, one thing that makes all of our ears perk up quite a bit. Um, that's, we all have that, I Ubered last night, so I would love, uh, I think those are those exciting things for people might be able to do. So today we have with us um, Jeffrey Arndt, who is the president and CEO of VIA. We have Art Reinhardt to my far left. He is the transportation and capital improvements with the city of San Antonio. And of course, Giovanni Washington. Um, he's with um, Alamary Community Council of Governments. However, Giovanni is here as a representative for Bear County. He is the appointee to and the chair of the Bear County Technical Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities. Uh, this is a group that the county commissioners each have an appointee and a designee from each of their districts to make sure that people with disabilities have a voice and those items are represented. And of course, Melanie Coughlin with Disability SA is one of those other people. In the room today with us, we also have, um, of course, Disability SA. We have Any Baby Can. We have Southwind Fields. And those are our live streaming uh, partners of our 14 agencies that are um, part of the Autism Lifeline Links Network. So let us get into some of these questions. I am going to actually look at you first, Jeff. Um, the, some you of the, look. you can look, there you go. <laughs> That's fabulous. Not too hard. Yeah, I know, don't look too hard. So uh, Jeff, one of, the, one of the items is really about um, that self-scheduling mm -hmm. part of it. Can you talk a little more about 
how that's going to be achieved and what the feedback has been to get you guys to that point you thought this was a priority. All right, so uh, I'll speak first specifically about Viatran, okay, which perfect. is the ADA paratransit piece of our operation. And we've made a lot of inroads. Um, I've been running paratransit system for about 35 years. Wow. And remember when we used to take reservations on three by five cars and put them in the slots and move them around. Wow. And so clearly we've come a long way. And uh, historically the telephone was the main way that you made reservations yep. and it was next day reservations or up to so many days in advance, four days in advance. Uh, but we have then, we now have the automated version. So when you call, you don't have to deal with an agent. You just, right. okay, and you have certain trips that you've already kind of pre-designated that you put in the system, makes it easier. But then the best, which we've only introduced over the last year, is what we call Viatrans online services. And that's where you, you essentially get online and you can book your trips, as many days, as many trips you need during those days. You can cancel trips if you need to cancel them without having to call anybody. And best of all, this is the best part, and it's not about scheduling the trip, it's about receiving the service. Best of all, when you have a trip, and uh, it's an hour before your scheduled pickup uh -huh. time. You can go on the system and you can watch your vehicle as it's approaching. Really? So, you know, one of the dilemmas uh, for a, a passenger would be that, you know, they have a trip time, they have a window of 30 mm -hmm. minutes actually in which they get, get, they get service and should they be waiting out there at the beginning of 30 minutes and potentially wait, up, wait that 30 minutes potentially um, and on days like more recently that's probably not the most comfortable thing to do right. now you can stay in an air-conditioned environment hopefully right and track your vehicle and when your vehicle gets a block or so from arriving mm -hmm. then you can take yourself out and you'll be right there when when the vehicle arrives that's so to amazing. me uh, you know the online reservation is cool the trip cancellation is cool but the being able to track your trip is amazing Absolutely, and this is an on, this is not an app. This is an online. It's an site. online okay. service. So you go onto our website. I'm not going to demonstrate yep. it. But okay. You go onto our website and look under services, and then you'll hit get into the Via Trans area. About halfway down, you'll see it, it tells you how to make a trip reservation, yep. and it has the phone number you call, and then it's got a link to the online services that you sign up for. That's wonderful. Yeah. How many participants are utilizing that online? So it's relatively right new, okay. and I I don't know the number of participants. It has been climbing steadily. Okay. What I would say. So good, good, good response, good yes. feedback. And then I'm going to go one step further. Okay. Here, and that is that uh, we also are piloting on the northeast side of town what we call a Via Link, but is globally known as Mobility on Demand. Okay. Right? And this is a service very similar to what I just described in, in Viatrans, except all, uh, all people can use it. It's not relegated only to those people that have been predetermined. As you oh. know, Viatrans, you have to be predetermined. You have yep. to be evaluated. Uh, and you have, this is an app-based or phone-based, okay. right? You have an app. You say, I need a trip from here to here. Typically, people are asking for the trip almost real time, right? It's going to book a van, okay. and that van, it will tell you the license number of the van, the driver of the van, the anticipated arrival for pickup, and the anticipated time in which you would be dropped at your location because it may pick up other people along the way. Our average wait time for a trip is five minutes, and that compares to the bus service that preceded it, which ran once every 60 minutes. Wow. The, the, the uh, service is accessible, and so it becomes a service that will serve the entire community. Right. Yeah. Wow. Real time, nice. same day, five minutes for a dollar thirty. Really? For a dollar thirty. That's amazing. And how is that pilot? Is it being received very well? I imagine. So we set a new high yesterday okay. at six hundred passengers yesterday. What? And we've only been out there since May, the beginning of May. So Remarkable. it's being very well received. The mayor took a ride. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple week weekends ago to an HEV, which would be appropriate. Absolutely. And uh, and had a very good experience. Great. I've ridden two or three times now. Always had good experiences. Okay. Uh, one of the times I rode, we picked up somebody along the way who's, who explained that he's been using it since day one because it was so convenient. Uh, the, the way the system works is within this 17 square mile area, we will pick you up and drop you off anywhere within mm -hmm. that area. So you don't have to worry about whether the bus route goes there yep. or what time the bus route goes sure. there. You just 
book the trip from here to here. It's going to ask you to go to a location to be picked up. They're all virtual stops, so it's typically going to be within okay. a block of where you are. Okay. I mean, very close, sure. right? And it's going, going to take you. If you want to go outside there and connect to the rest of the VIA system, then it will take you to NACO Pass. Okay. And that's where we have ser uh, VIA services, yeah. bus services, I should say, yeah. that you can transfer Up on to. And go to. Absolutely. So what, um, a little more challenging, what is the scalability of this? And is there a timeline for Sure. So yeah. as I said, this is a pilot. Um, and it's a one-year pilot, okay. but we said from the start and, and the board, you know, uh, who authorized the pilot, our board, agreed that we may not have to wait a full year to decide that, hey, this is working right. really well, sure. right? Uh -huh. uh, I mean, from my perspective, we're only the third month in or whatever, sure. and it's going extremely well. Uh, so that means that we might move out of that pilot into another area more okay. quickly than we anticipated. Excellent. Right now, we would move into another area about fall of next year, uh, but yesterday, <laughs> we already had the conversation about maybe we should move that up because this is working so well. So in the, the uh, Connect SA plan, you'll see that there are large swaths of area that, that are designated as potential mobility on-demand areas. Right? Okay. Now, we wouldn't do the whole, we would still have separate areas. You could travel anywhere in this area, and then we'd have to figure out how we do intra-area yes. type transportation. That, that would be the next step. Right. Uh, but most of the area that's outside 1604 is part of that kind of service. And then our intention, or my intention, my intention is to introduce the same kind of strategy at some of our activity centers, where, for example, the medical center. Yeah. We have a large transit center, the buses get you there, and then you either transfer to another bus or whatever to get to your, your final destination. Well, medical center is laid out in a sort of suburban uh -huh. mode. You know, the buildings are far back and there's beautiful grassy areas between the sidewalk and the building. So you, we drop a passenger off, you know, on, at the street, but they sometimes have a bit of a way to go to get into the building. Right. So my uh, concept is that at that same transit center, we could have mobility on demand type service that would take you to the front oh. door of where you're trying to go. So the yeah, last mile situation for yes, but, reverse. But within yeah. the, a more urbanized area where we would still maintain bus service, mm -hmm. uh, but we would be offering that kind of thing. So that's the next thing for us to pilot. That's gonna be a little bit further down the road because sure. we have a lot to do right, to deal with right there. But again, it's really wonderful and innovative to, to know that our city and our community is starting to really look at this as Something we talk a lot about quality of life, right? And mm -hmm. for people with disabilities, whatever that disability is, whether intellectual or physical, the ability to work, to live, to socialize is all incumbent upon your ability to yes. transport yes. within Absolutely. places. And so the isolation, which then leads to you know depression and all sorts of other things, we're always dealing with it in our agencies and at ACOG, is it's so. I, I, I'm thrilled and hopefully our community is to really know that transportation is one of those real important linchpins in making sure that quality of life is deliverable to everybody. Uh, we have a question, so. So one of our parents is asking, can you speak to the training that your VIA Transit and VIA bus drivers go through um, when working with the disability population, for example, if my son finds himself in a precarious situation, perhaps involving another passenger, how has the staff member been trained to handle that situation? So all of our all of our drivers receive extensive training in in both operation of the vehicle, obviously safe operation of the vehicle, and in customer service. And the VIA Trans operators specifically receive a great deal of, of sensitivity training associated with a variety of disabilities and, and how to deal with it. The other thing is they're part of the system. So if there were a difficulty between two passengers on that van, they can, they can radio dispatch and have a supervisor arrive, or if it really escalated, radio uh, via transit police, and either transit police or one of our partner agencies. Uh, would arrive as well, so that that's that added level of security. Our contract operator, so VIA directly operates about 40% uh, of the service, and MV Transportation, which is a private company, operates the other 60%. They have the same training standards as VIA to make sure okay. that we all consistently uh, deal appropriately with our customers. Excellent. 
So I'm going to go to Mr. Giovanni Washington, and of course, again, Giovanni is uh, part of the, the chairman of the Bear County Technical Advisory Committee, um, and is also uh, a well-regarded man at the Alamo Area Council of Governments, and has always been a wonderful advocate for people with disabilities in that in that arena. So I want to talk with you and have give you the opportunity as someone who represents. I mean, you and again, Melanie and the other appointees to this advisory committee you're given the responsibility to listen to and then voice to our county and to VIA and to our city the concerns and the needs and challenges of people with disabilities. So how do you feel that um, you you guys have transcended that and made that bridge between the Connect SA project and its objectives? And what you uh, well, first off, thanks for the invitation to participate yeah. today. It's a great event. And uh, as you mentioned, yes, I do serve as a chair for the Technical Advisory Committee for Persons with Disabilities. We serve as a link or liaison between the community and the um, and Bear County, and then also with the Commissioner's Court. They've been instrumental in supporting individuals with disabilities in the community, and um, through plans such as the uh, Connect SA and other programs and initiatives, uh, we're really happy with the um, results and the feedback that we've received from the community and in particular um, individuals with uh, developmental and intellectual um, disabilities. Um, that being said, um, some of the um, programs or initiatives that I uh, wanted to highlight today, um, first would be in October, we're going to be um, celebrating uh, the uh, Employment Disability Awareness Month. Um, as you know, Kara, there's over 80,000 or more individuals here in Bexar County with an intellectual or developmental disability all of which aren't currently working, but we do have various programs, um, initiatives, community partners um, like VIA, um, like our part, local workforce board, and also our state partners, TWC, VR, all working towards getting those individuals um, employment and then also supporting those individuals in employment either through wraparound services or in some cases um, minor accommodations to assist them in maintaining that employment and being successful in it. So we're really, um, I'm thrilled with um, the opportunity to uh, bring awareness about the uh, disabled community and um, how they can um, achieve and sustain employment in the community. We've been uh, meeting with various civic groups, um, also the um, Chambers of Commerce, um, some of our state partners as well, to talk about individuals with disability, disabilities and how they can um, invoke uh, positive um, environments there at the workplace. And so, of course, as we just said, you can't work if you don't have transportation to get there. And so that connection for making sure that the, that communication between the technical, technical advisory committee sure. and Bear, uh, Disability Awareness Month, these are all excellent opportunities to make sure that communication in silos continue to be broken down and eventually uh, shattered. So I think that you know, having these conversations is important That's because true. we can help people find employment that, again, leads to a higher quality of life so they can live independently, their, their self-esteem, a million things, their socialization improve. These are all things we have as neurotypical people. We want to make sure that we have that for, our, for everyone in our community with a disability. But if we get them the job and they're a swell person, they're dedicated, but if they can't get there with consistency and on time, it's all for naught. Right. So this is, again, so important. So I'm gonna go to you, Art, now. Um, and s the city of San Antonio, it's a big place. It's only getting bigger. As the guy who's in charge of transportation and capital improvements, um, that's a big job. Uh, many, many streets, many, many sidewalks. Um, older streets, I live in a, I live in a, a neighborhood, sorry, our houses are built in the 20s. So just our curb cuts, things like that. I can't <laughs> yeah. imagine what we're dealing with. The, the, we always joke that the, the kids, they have to play in the street because everything's so wonky. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of those things. I'm curious with a new city manager and translating that, what the passion and purpose is, the dedication to the disability population and how that translates into some of the things you're doing every day and how that connects with this plan. Sure, so uh, first, uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I represent the city's transportation and capital improvements department. So we, we handle all of the city's infrastructure, whether it's street maintenance issues, drainage concerns, or traffic management. So uh, great opportunity to talk about Connect SA and what we do. So you, I'll, first I'll start with just the size of San Antonio, just to level set. 
Uh, so by population, we're the seventh largest city, about one and a half million. Uh, we're actually physically larger than the city of Los Angeles. We're about 550 wow. square miles in yeah. area. So if you take all of our streets, which is about 4,100 miles, centerline miles of streets, and you were to put them all together, it's further than San Antonio to Anchorage, Alaska. So that's the size of infrastructure that we maintain. On top of that, we have sidewalks. So we have about 5,000 miles of sidewalks. One of the challenges that we have, though, is we have about 2,000 miles of gaps in that sidewalk. Uh -huh. um, so there's areas all over the city that don't have sidewalks. So that's a very big program of ours, and it really um, was highlighted in the last fiscal year with the hiring uh, of this, the city's new pedestrian mobility officer. So that's one step. Great. Really help trying to, like you mentioned, break down silos within the city government. Um, the other thing, and uh, we'll actually talk about it this afternoon in front of the city council, is with the fiscal year 20 budget we're presenting today, um, we're going to see an increase in sidewalk funding. So $17 million is proposed for fiscal year 20 to help fill some of those gaps. Okay. Now, um, that will only get us about 40 miles, and wow. I mentioned about 2,000 miles. So that's, there's a lot of work to be done, and that's one of the conversations we'll have later about how Connect SA can help accelerate that. So, um, you know, on a daily basis, though, uh, one of the things that we do have is the Disability Access Office. That's within TCI. Mm -hmm. So that's the city's focal point on how do we help ensure that our programs, procedures, policies, and even infrastructure serves everyone, uh, definitely those people with disabilities. So the office was created back in the 70s, and um, that's kind of our group within TCI that is responsible for uh, helping those and then having oversight within the city as well to make sure our policies uh, are equitable. So. Excellent, so I'm curious, how do those 40 miles get decided? Yeah. How do, how, how, who's, the, who's the omnipotent person who makes that Whoever decision? Whoever can run the fastest. I, I was gonna say, I'm like, if it's a foot race, yeah. I'm so, not your girl, but so yeah. One of the things we've done over the last really two years is uh, we know where each and every one of those almost 2,000 miles of gaps are. Mm -hmm. So we prioritize those spatially, um, things that are say within a quarter of a mile of a school or a bus stop okay. or a medical center. Um, so we have a whole list and, and there's a scoring mechanism and so that's how we are able to prioritize the areas that are kind of most important to fill first okay. um, and then work our way down. So that's the process we've uh, undertaken and that's kind of what we've put in front of city council um, to, to help kind of ensure that we're just we're filling the right gaps with the limited funds we have. So is there a way, or what is the best route, is it through this disability access office, that people have, people with disabilities have an opportunity to say, that's, that's swell, but there's this one mile stretch between here and here that is impossible for us to navigate. And if not to inform where these 40 miles go and then where the subsequent hundreds of miles go, um, how do people voice that concern and where do they do so? Can you let us sure. know that? Yeah, so the easiest thing is to, to call through on one um, or if you're able to use the new application the city has. You can actually take a picture of what that obstruction is or that barrier and that will get routed to the right people. Um, so it could be as simple as maybe a, a one inch lip in our sidewalk that needs to be shaven down. We can send crews out there to, to go mill that down so that it can be accessible. Uh, or it may be a new curb ramp that needs to be installed. So, the 311 process is the simplest way and it ensures everything is tracked. What is the app called? It's 311 SA. So it was something that was just launched about a year ago, actually. We're getting ready to celebrate one year. And so, just on the, um, in the interest of making sure everybody really does understand, out, out in the world, right? So 311 is a, basically a way to address any concerns, whether it's about transportation, about sidewalks, about your rubbish, about where to, uh, no, not where to dig, but you know, some of those kinds of things. Yeah. Can you talk a little yeah, about so that more from the city perspective? Essentially, what that is? Uh, through and one is for any non emergency call. It, it, like you mentioned, it could be uh, an overgrown yard you know, or, or something with the infrastructure or not even knowing when, when your uh, garbage or recycle collection is. So, uh, there's a whole department that manages those calls and gets you to the right people. Sometimes they're not related to the city mm -hmm. itself, it could be a SAWS or CPS, but mm -hmm. they will get you to the right people so that it helps everyone. So basically, three one one is the autism lifeline links of the city of San Antonio, is what I want to say. So, <laughs> yeah, they, but they, you know, they do. They're the top of that funnel. You call them, and they will connect you to, will provide you the information to the most appropriate place to address some of those needs. And to be very clear, again, it's not for emergency. That's needs. Good. So then I want to come back again. So the disability access office, um, what do they do? Is that some place where people voice those concerns about transportation or? 
um, not necessarily transportation because that's much but I mean access and, and how does right. that happen? Yeah. It's, it's more geared towards the built environment okay. um, and then also policies and procedures so ensuring that we do comply with federal and state laws that are in place um, but on a daily basis okay. it could be some of those through on one calls that someone says hey I, I can't get to this building because um, if you look at our city hall for example right it's under a renovation right now which we're managing okay. but the accessible access was at the rear of the building not the front mm -hmm. uh, so it could be challenges like that um, and then some of those you know require lots of funding and we kind of have to wait to do uh, but it could be more easier ones like the example I talked about you know a trip hazard that we can go out and address so um, on a daily basis it's ensuring that those uh, challenges are addressed and that also citywide that um, other departments we have over 30 departments in the city know about the, the challenges that are in place and making sure their policies uh, serve everyone and what, that's so to what Art was saying that's what makes VIA among the partners in transportation unique in that most of the other par partners in transportation are all about providing the infrastructure we provide the service right yep. the infrastructure is so important to us the sidewalks are so important to us because I always say every transit trip the person starts and ends the trip as a pedestrian. Yeah, right? that's true. And so we need to have the infrastructure to get people to and from the stops to where they're trying, where they're coming from or where they're going to. And that's why it's so important and that's why, you know, prioritizing to, to bus stops, for example, is very important to us. And so when we talk about, you know, some of the, the is that a question? Oh, sorry. Um, but some of the, you can build the pipes, right? But right. If they're not going to the right places, and then you need people to, right. to now to go right. through those. Okay, so this is uh, so Art spoke to this 200 miles of sidewalk. Well, uh, going back to what the three dis <laughs> items on the um, plan are that are related to people with disabilities, and so Art just spoke a little bit about what the construct up to 200 miles of sidewalks to eliminate the gaps between existing networks. So, are there any other um, initiatives that if this project, which of course it will go through and pass with flying colors and they'll even give you extra money to do so, right? Thanks, Shannon's giving me the thumbs up that in the back. But are there any other things, if this is not part of, if this doesn't come through, if this initiative doesn't come through, that the city is doing to make sure that some of those gaps in sidewalks are addressed? So on, a, on an annual basis, as I mentioned, uh, funding has been allocated. Historically, it's been about $5 million specific to sidewalks, and it would kind of focus just on sidewalks, but for this uh, conversation, uh, but like I said, this year we're at 17 million will be uh, proposed for fiscal year 20. So um, that'll be our mechanism moving forward. Now, uh, you know, when Connect us say uh, moves forward, uh, we'll get that surge of funding to help accelerate those programs. So um, that's really what we're looking for. And that's uh, specific to the pedestrian realm, uh, but you know, there's also the automobility as well as yeah. uh, bikes and scooters now. So oh, we'll, we'll yeah. get to that one in a second because okay. we know that's burning. Um, and then certainly everything Jeff mentioned earlier that B is working on. Okay. I just want to take this opportunity to make sure that everyone knows, please go either Connect SA, Autism Life on Links, or one of the people that are streaming it, or cross-posting it with us. Any baby can. Um, who else did I forget? Some them? Disability SA and Southwind Fields. Go to any of those places to post your questions, and there we go. So, Ms. Melanie, please. Um, so, we have a couple of questions. Um, do, is there still transportation available to assist people in learning how to ride public transportation? And then is there, um, is there training for providers um, to help educate their constituents about safe transportation and, and gaining access to public transportation? Okay, so Melanie, you're the historian. Who historically did that training on how to? Are we pointing at Giovanni? Didn't ACOG have a contract okay. with DIA for a little bit? Uh, that was a pilot program of maybe okay. two or three years ago, okay. um, train the trainer, and it was um, in part um, having individuals with dis disabilities um, learn how to navigate the VIA system. Um, uh, the pilot <coughs> program, um, I don't think that it met its um, parameters as far as the criteria for um, continuing it, um, but certainly I would suggest for any individuals who are interested in um, the VIA trans system, if they are a part of ACOG or with any community organizations, um, they may have access to case managers or service coordinators who can assist them with filling out the VIA trans applications, um, learning how to access those systems, and then ultimately using them to their satisfaction. And we have on 
the VIA website, we have videos that deal both with how to ride the fixed route bus because okay. some folks have at least some fixed route buses that, that they can make use of. Sure. Uh, and it walks you all the way through the five easy steps, including be sure and get off the bus when you get there. Yeah. And then the second video, which explains to you the entire VIA trains. Okay. And as they access that, so we can make sure we're saying go to via what's via info dot net and the video there's a English video a Spanish video and a American sign language sign awesome. videos excellent so go there and we can get all trained on how to how to do that I watched the video yesterday and I found Did you? I found three corrections that we need to make to it but yes <laughs> I, have, I have some other editing would you like to do it for me I'm always behind go ahead Melanie. What are the requirements for a young adult to qualify for transportation, um, specifically if they have functional Asperger's um, and he doesn't and they don't drive? So, what what are the steps to qualifying? So, first of all, and what happens if you get denied? Do you have a course of oh. of um, oh appeal? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yes, absolutely. So, so, so pretty simple again. I went to the website to double check all this before I came here. Uh, fairly simple form. It also is online. Okay. It's, I believe, five pages long. It sound, five pages sounds like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. But about three of them are kind of lists where you just check off if you have you know, various uh, conditions, right? Okay. So it's, it's not all that long to fill out. And obviously, you can have somebody assist you in filling that out. Okay. And it gets submitted to, to via trans, and the eligibility folks review it. They have a maximum of 21 days to make a determination. Uh, at the end of 21 days, you automatically, by default, become eligible for via trans until there is a final destina or destination determination. Uh, if one is denied access, then yes, absolutely, there is an appeal process which involves people outside of the via trans people. Okay. Melody. Um, so while Connect SA is, is focused on reducing traffic in San Antonio, um, some of our questions are about increasing that a little bit, and are there any programs that anybody is aware of, of programs that help people with disabilities learn how to drive? I got that question the other day from a mom, and that was asking about driving <coughs> places with driving lessons that could accommodate somebody on a spectrum or somebody with a disability. Any, I want to look at Giovanni for that one. Um, well, there are some private driving schools that may have curriculum specific to individuals with disabilities, such as autism, um, and maybe some other mobility or um, vision impairments or hearing impairments. Um, they would just have to look up each individual driving school to see what they offer. And that arena, what they do exist here in Bear County. Okay. Um, I want to also take a moment and say that. We want to make sure that anyone out that, that's out there listening goes to Connect SA's website, which is connectsa.com, and takes up at the in the bar at the top. There's the take a take our survey. It's in white letters. Please click that. Again, this is your opportunity to have a voice on, the, you know, the whole 25 by 25 by 2025. But especially for those of you who have a disability and or advocates for people with disabilities, we want you to go in and, and, and give us that information, give us that feedback, provide that voice. We often find ourselves in this population saying, well, we, you know, no one's listening, nobody's hearing us. And so these are those opportunities that if we don't stand up and take the time to take that survey, um, it'll be very difficult when, when decision time comes around and the votes are made and money's gone through and we say, well, that isn't representative, or that sure. doesn't actually serve a need or fill a hole that is important for us, and not a literal hole, not a pothole necessarily. Well, in, in fact, you know, the uh, I, I view the Connect SA as kind of a two uh, two phase effort, right? Okay. And the first phase is, in fact, put out kind of a recommended plan mm -hmm. and receive public input so that that plan can be reviewed and modified so that when we do go forward or when Connect SA, I'm sorry, when Connect SA goes forward with an initiative for funding of, of, of the plan, that the plan has already incorporated uh, what the public is looking for. So if the pub public says, which would be absurd, if the public said we're not interested in sidewalks, we, right. we want, uh, you know, hopscotch lanes. Right. At least that would be considered, and I'll, I, I can tell you that the Connect SA Executive Director 
that's <clears throat> I think what something that's very high on her priority list to to be to catalog every comment or request and make sure that it's fully considered. Thank you. If you're saying that, and again, this is that the, they are asking that they are this the, this forum is there to ask the question to say we want your input. So we're encouraging you highly to please provide that input um, so that it can be constructive and it can be incorporated into final decisions. So we thank you for that. So again, those three primary of the 25 are create a one call, one click center transportation um, services and information for people with disabilities. And so Jeff covered that well. Construct up to 200 miles of sidewalks. And so Art covered that. And create equitable citywide standards for a variety of affordable things. Um, so you both, you, all three of you have covered that. But um, of course, Giovanni and Melanie being representatives from the county to make sure that those voices are heard is really important. So again, please submit your questions, like, do all those kinds of great things, but most importantly, go to connectsa.com and take that, take the survey and provide that feedback to us. Um, just really quickly, I was, the question was supposed to be earlier, and I really feel like whose purview does that fall into? I know pretty much the city, but not necessarily yours are on the scooters. I mean, okay. I feel like every day, and I, I, I live right off Broadway, so I'm, I'm one of the Broadway Zoomers every day, and I'm, even in the evening where people are downtown having beverages or up in the Pearl, and you're like, oh my God, this seems so dangerous. Um, so there's a million things people worry about. I don't want to get into the politics of it all, but every day, multiple times a day, people with mobility issues or VI issues or vision impairment issues are impeded from walking and putting themselves in danger. I had a man, just myself, with his aid, but walk out in the street. Uh, th I saw his, I mean, I have the goosebumps. I saw the tip of his cane mm -hmm. and I stopped because he had to get around a scooter. So. It is it, Art's responsibility. Well, let's clear. <laughs> <it. laughs> oh, let's go. Putting yeah. you up there. So the, Way to sell them. Good job. So the city is responsible. Yes, they are. Um, within the city, it's our Center City Development and Operations Department. Mm -hmm. um, primarily, that's the department that oversees okay. the downtown area. Um, primarily because the scooters sort of blossomed in the downtown area. Okay. Uh, so they took the lead. Our department was there for technical assistance as well. Um, but just a very high level, kind of the approach the city took was sort of a wait and see approach. Some cities sure. have, you know, heavy fisted and, and outright banned them. Um, others, you know, had no sort of uh, restrictions. So we were somewhere in the middle just to kind of see it's a new technology, what's the market gonna do? Mm -hmm. So there was a pilot program that was done which ended back in the April, May timeframe. Um, so the next step is uh, city council has already approved it, but uh, we, we were limiting the number of operators and scooters and we're going to competi competitively select the number. So okay. uh, a re request for proposals went out it's been received. Uh, that's going to be reviewed with the goal of the October timeframe, uh, presenting the, the, the final two or three to council for approval. So what that will do is significantly reduce the clutter, uh, which has posed some challenges. That's a lesson learned about gotcha. um, you know, managing it. Uh -huh. um, simultaneously, uh, effective June 30th, scooters are no longer allowed to operate on the sidewalk. So yeah. they have to be on the streets. Um, Even also, parked on the streets? So no, um, but what CCDO has done, and, and you'll see it downtown, is there's some dedicated zones now to help corral I saw that, that. So. I, I've been traveling a bit lately, and I see just um, paint, right. a paint outline. swatch, yeah. an outline of scooters go, kind of like you do with your children. Yeah. Shoes go here, sneakers go here, people. So, and the, one of the biggest challenges is so, <laughs> San, San Antonio just celebrated our tricentennial. So we're 300 years old, and our infrastructure is old. And then scooters show up almost overnight, and now we're trying to, to catch, catch up, up to that technology. So. And again, I want to be just, uh, and this is an Autism Life on Links, this is Kara McGrain as someone who's a social justice advocate. I think this, the scooters solve a tremendous last mile There's so much issue. Potential. I mean, I, 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 I get really excited about it. I was a Jesuit volunteer when I first came to this town, and I'm from Boston and New York. So th that last mile issue is tremendous. Even yep. just people don't have to. They can, they can be with their children to get them off to school for a half an hour earlier 
because they can take a scooter instead of having to walk that last full mile. So well, it's an important the thing. Is, uh, Fifteen or older. No, no, no. I don't mean on the scooter. I mean like I can let my I can give my kiddo a kiss and let them go off to school before I have to not be there to get on the bus that earlier. So no, they should not. I see that all. Okay, yes. Yes, sidebars. That's a, another event. That's we'll another thing. Yeah. So will there be accountability? Since they will, like, is there going to be a better way in this plan? Since you'll be selecting three primary operators, is are we going to are we going to tie some accountability? to that, monitoring where their scooters are landing and not blocking ways more frequent, so, more often. So um, part of the information we'll want to see is what is their plan? How, okay. What sort of technology or innovation do they have? And, and that's how we'll help see you know, who's going to rise above the others. So, uh, but I'm glad you mentioned we, because it really is on everyone, right? As an as a operator mm -hmm. or city or just a general citizen or resident, uh, trying to, to make better for San Antonio. So. Excellent. I think that, um, one of the one of the important factors in here is I'm curious like who else is innovating did we take any of these cues on the cool uh, mobility, on mo demand. mobility on demand from somebody else it's okay I mean I steal ideas all the time all my leadership team knows I I own them like I stole that I stole <laughs> that good idea is a good idea and um, scooter approaches and I want to we're getting near our end I want to morph that into other ways to do things like that in concert with you or with you, um, we know we do it with you, you're a representative, that's what you do all the time. I mean, so people like us that are trying to get the voices, they trust these entities and not mistrust of the hires, but you know what I mean? Like, how do we bridge this gap a little better? Are there other innovative listening sessions or things that might be happening regarding transportation? Or what are the city's plans or VA's plans or the county's plans for continuing dialogue after modeling this kind of good stuff? We have, uh, anytime we do any kind of service changes, we have public hearings and public meetings, and we, you know, we take public input, and uh, oftentimes the subject matter of the public meeting may be one thing, and someone else, someone wants to discuss something else, typically the budget meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people who come to the budget meeting are not as concerned about the budget as, gotcha. but more concerned about some other element. We take that. Uh, as far as innovation, the transit industry, you know, is interesting because we don't compete with each other, we complement each other. It's not like Capital Metro is gonna come here and start trying to right. run those, right? So there, there's a large network related <laughs> to innovation and Steve Young, who's our head of uh, innovation and technology, okay. is plugged into their s separate committee. So the, the thing we're doing on the Northeast side via link, there are some other examples of things like that. They're not identical. Mo many of them, most of them, are serving as a feeder to a rail station, okay. right? And, yeah. and that's it. You get fed to a rail station. And we said, okay, we're gonna make it broader. We're gonna carry you anywhere within the zone uh -huh. and then feed you to a station. And so, yes, I am not <laughs> reluctant to steal any good idea. Good stuff. No. We were the first to offer free Wi-Fi on buses in the nation. Really? Yes. So I didn't know that. We were the first. Wow. So. I'll follow up on that, that's all right, because yeah, uh, Jeff touched on a couple of things. So uh, within the city, we have a, a separate Office of Innovation, and so their mission is to look across the city for ways to, to get better, um, and it may not even be new technology, but just a way to do something better. Right. Um, and so one of those examples that Jeff talked about public meetings is uh, just really over the last year, we've started doing what we're calling tele-town halls. So it's very similar to this. Uh, I sat on one of those. Um, over 2,000 participants were part of that process. So. Uh, there will be another one coming up for our budget process, uh, and it's a great way, especially for people with disabilities who can't physically get to our public meeting, right. to call in. Um, so that's a great opportunity. It's nothing new. We're, the phone's been around for years, but this process is. So that's just one thing. Um, but and they're also looking at technology improvements, and Jeff didn't mention it, but um, one of the partnerships we have with, with VIA is called Transit Signal Priority. So on some of their high-frequency routes, um, basically, the bus can communicate with our traffic signal system to get longer green time, because things like that. Yeah. So there is right. there is some hidden technology that um, has been innovative over the years. Brave <laughs> new world, people. Um, so <coughs> Melanie has a question and a comment. And so a comment on the Tele Town Hall. If you go and register to attend the Tele Town Hall, they will actually call you at the beginning of the session, so you don't even have to remember to call in. They'll the system calls you. So please, Art, tell us, yeah. how does someone 
then get to tell the town call. The, well, the easiest thing, you could either call 311 or if you go to saspeakup.com, there will be lots of information about our budget process and you can register through there. Cool. Okay, so SA Speak Up 311. Um, how else do people communicate with you? They just go, not just to, but I mean, via.com, yeah. right? Via info. Via, via info. info. Net. Via info.net. Yes. Connect SA. Dot com. Um, I'm, we want to make sure we get all these links up on our website so that we, we have those. Um, and also uh, the Bear County website, there is a tab with Bear a, uh, County. up at the top there is a uh, tab with a wheelchair. If you click on it, it brings you directly to the Technical Advisory Committee for Persons with Disabilities. There are forms if you want to submit questions or even maybe some complaints about some of the infrastructure or some other services that the county offers. And we have dedicated staff that will look at the issues and um, address them accordingly. And I, I just like yeah. to say that you know there are some people that um, that are not as technology comfortable, sure. and so we have the opportunity to use a device that's called a, a telephone. What? Yes, we have a telephone, and at, at uh, three six two twenty twenty, you can get a human being, still get a human being, to ask for information. To get next bus information, if you have a concern, you can leave a concern. So that's still available too. That it, 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 we're we're being silly, but yeah. it's but so, it's important. It, it's really yes. important because so many people are not savvy, or I think about the VI community may not you know the, mm -hmm. the things their operations right. may be down. Right. So having that is so important. And again, this is about we're speaking from the autism and developmental disability lens. Uh, but this transportation issue is about our friends at Connectability Warm Springs, our friends uh, with uh, traumatic brain injuries or acquired brain injuries mm -hmm. and, and, and spinal cord injuries or um, anything that's across the disability spectrum that sure. prevents you from being able to access transportation or even have access to any transportation. And of course, every person, part of our project is also the social determinants of health, right? And so making sure that people really understand the quality of life for everybody in our community, uh, whether you have a disability or not, has a lot to do with where you live, what you have access to, how you mobile, how, how you how you mo mobilize, move, move about, how, how you navigate, how you, how, you, how you get around. How you get there. How you get there and, um, and what that experience is, is, what that experience is, is as much the responsibility of everybody in this community, particularly everybody sitting at this table. Um, I believe there's another question. Did you have a question? I was just in sharing your voice and, and letting people know what's going on. Art, would you speak to the formal complaint process with the city and how that's funneled to the mm -hmm. Disability Access Office? Certainly, so if, if there is, uh, whether it's a policy or infrastructure related item, um, you know, anyone has a right to, to issue a formal complaint through the city. Those. Uh, whether it's through through and one or directly to our office, uh, that's something that we will follow up on and respond to uh, with the appropriate measure. If, yeah, some, sometimes it's a longer term solution if it requires mm -hmm. a lot of funding, gotcha. um, but, but certainly there's that opportunity. And I know we just talked about using the phone instead, but um, through our website, which is sanantonio.gov slash TCI, there's a link to the Disability Access Office okay. where you can submit uh, any of one of those forms or complaints. Excellent. Um, so we're going to get all of these um, links up for you, and again, we really want to encourage people to go to connectsa.com and click that survey button. Um, you know, what is it? Su vote says su vote. I mean, like you know, all these things are so true, and we need one of those great sayings about, for the disability community. We're working on those in some of our um, groups. I just want to take a moment um, to rem to just let everybody know who the partners are in Autism Lifeline Links. I mean, we have hundreds of um, hundreds of stakeholders and uh, two two new strong stakeholders here with us today, and I look to reinforce that relationship. Um, but the agencies that are in our electronic referral platform system that allows us to expeditiously connect people to services that do exist, but also try to identify the barriers or the gaps in those services, so we as a community can have a comprehensive approach to solving problems rather than much like you're doing. We can say, I say, throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. That is not an effective approach and it's a costly approach. Um, so um, Alamo Area Council of Governments, the IDD Services Division, Any Baby Can, Autism Community Network, Autism Treatment Center, the ARC of San Antonio, Brighton Center, Camp Camp, the Center for Healthcare Services, 
Children's Hospital San Antonio, the Autism Clinic over there, Disability SA, Down Syndrome Association, Respite Care San Antonio, South Bend Fields, and Special Reach. Um, if you would like, if you have, if you are a person with autism, um, adult as well, we really want to hear from our adults. Um, we have a new study that is, has been published, the Kronkowski Foundation published that for us. We're working very hard in our work groups, um, which are full of all of business community stakeholders, to help advance the position of and bring more attention to adults with autism and with disabilities in our community. Um, they've been a long forgotten population. We talk about this all the time mm -hmm. in our uh, planning advisory council meetings at ACOG that um, for such a long time there just haven't been services or mm -hmm. the, the voice has not been heard. So this is an excellent start to that. So I thank you all. Um, are there any other questions that are out there in the Facebook world? If not, uh, we want to make sure that again you go to Connect SA dot com and click the survey button but then also if you have concerns um, with your transportation go to uh, via info dot net and make sure that we're addressing those mm -hmm. um, I think that this is once again a great excellent opportunity to say we are here as a community um, the people who are making decisions are not doing those unilaterally um, but we have to make sure that our disability population is letting them know what they think and what would be the most best approach any final thoughts or words from any of you? That we, anything we didn't cover? No, I think you covered everything. I just repeat yeah. that I tell everyone at VIA that our job, we are not a bus company. Mm -hmm. We are providing vital connections that make a big difference in people's lives. And you're talking about a specific segment of population that has some challenges in yeah. making those connections. And we view it as an honor and a privilege to serve our customers. Thank you for being here. And again, sure. VIA's in a big city that continues to grow, um, it's important. It's, imp it's not important, it's imperative that that relationship is clear and um, people feel they can get around for their quality of life. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you all. We appreciate it. And uh, look on our Facebook Live, Autism Life Online Links Facebook, uh, Facebook page for next month's topic and when we will be broadcasting that. Thank you for being here today, Art and Jeff and Giovanni, and uh, have a great day. Thank you.